As you cruise down a deserted road, a gentle breeze caresses your face through an open window. The occasional jolt of the car unsettles you. However, you quickly dismiss it from your mind. Uh, let's see. You just finished your first year in college, second year in college, third year in college. You finish your last year in college. Eh, I am way too old to be considering myself like any one of these. So, like, last year? You've been looking forward to this trip. You were grinding through college relentlessly and finally had the chance to go back home to visit family and friends as a surprise over the summer. You look down at your GPS, following the bright yellow line displayed on your screen. This wasn't a road you were completely familiar with, nor was it anywhere near the freeway. So stupidly, you were persuaded by a video on Quick Walk to reconnect with nature, and thought it'd be faster than sitting through traffic jams or turbulence. Okay, Lion, just keep driving. It's probably nothing. You sigh to yourself and turn your radio up louder, hoping to drown out your anxiety. I knew I should've just taken a plane. Ugh. This is the last time I'm listening to some random person on the internet. Just as you mentally shake your fist at the wickwalk you watched, your thoughts are abruptly interrupted by the stuttering of your car's engine. Metallic clattering comes from the hood of your car, Make your eyes widen in alarm. What? Before you could fully process what was happening, the car let out its final breath, stopping dead in the middle of nowhere. You sit in silence for a few minutes before inhaling deeply and stepping out of the car to observe its exterior. Your eyes squint in annoyance as light smoke expels from the hood of your car. Damn it. What am I supposed to do now? Feeling a lump build up in your throat, you sit up by a nearby rock to recollect yourself. Okay, no biggie. I'm just lost in the middle of nowhere. We have no signal. And no sign of life. Ah! <laughs> you bury your head deep in your hands and groan at the absurdity of this situation. No way, no way, no way! This cannot actually be happening. What is this? A bad 2000s Adam Dirtler movie? After what felt like an eternity under the scorching summer sun, the familiar growl of a werewolf functioning car catches your attention from a distance. Breathing a sigh of relief, you set out and begin to wave frantically to grab the driver's attention. The car slows down and parks nearby. The engine pauses momentarily as the driver's door swings open. A man emerges from the car donning a deep green jacket and tussled brown hair. He looks at you with a curious gaze as he takes off his sunglasses to rest them on the collar of his shirt. Hey, is everything all right? Do you need help? Uh, let's see. What does it look like? I'm not really sure what to do. Thank God you came. Thank God you came! Thank God you came. I was convinced I'd die out here. <laughs> He laughs under his breath and dips his head slightly at you, taking a peek at your car. He steps forward, examining a car and sighing lightly at the steam rising up from your vehicle. His hand motions to the broken heap of a car, meeting your eyes for a quick second. I'm afraid that isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Might as well hop in with me and find shelter for the night. His hand taps the back of the car as he walks away, his hand gesturing for you to follow. You hesitate as he only just met this man. He looks back at you for a moment before a light chuckle escapes his lips. Don't worry, you can trust me. He reaches into his pocket, taking out a small golden medallion. Oh! Am I about to smash the sheriff? Eh. You give him an awkward smile as you make your way to his car. The ride has been silent so far, but you don't mind. The smell of sea salt pours in from the open pane, the cool wind combing through your hair. Your eyes close as you take in your surroundings. Enjoying the view? You open your eyes and turn to look at him. His hair was dancing along with the breeze coming from his open window, the lighter strands in his hair glistening under the sun. You're too pretty for this. 
You purse your lips for a moment and shrug. I guess it's all right. He lets out a small chuckle. You're a tough critic, aren't you? His lips curl into a playful smirk, and you can't help but smile back. Ah, uh, well, I have high standards. I've seen better. Why well, I have high standards? Well, I have high standards when it comes to views. You sink deeper into the seat, getting yourself comfortable for the rest of the trip. He turns down the volume of the car radio, allowing the soothing sound of nature to take center stage. So, it would probably be nice to get to know your travel buddy for the next God knows how many hours. Might as well break the ice. Uh, where are we headed? Hell, have you been a sheriff? Yeah. Where are we headed? If you don't mind me asking, where are we headed? Ah, my town, Brian Bay. Ever heard of it? You think to yourself for a moment, racking your memory for any mention of Brian Bay. Nah, doesn't ring a bell. He nods to himself as you speak. I don't blame you. We're not too well known. I promise you that. I like your state though. You've got great views. Actually, I'd like to ask you the same. What are you doing out here? I was trying to visit home from college. Haven't been back for a while and was feeling a little homesick. Just my luck to have my car break down when I try though, right? <laughs> he offhandedly laughs at your joke and taps lightly on the steering wheel. Yeah, that does suck. Hey, no worries. We'll get you back on the road in no time. He lets go of the wheel for a brief moment to give you a pat on the shoulder before focusing on the drive again. How long have you been a sheriff? Uh, good few years actually. Probably as soon as I graduated. Not that I mind. I love the job. You get to help people. Like you. End of the day, that's all that really matters to me. That's pretty nice. I guess so. I haven't really seen myself doing anything else. He smiles to himself. I don't think I have anything else to ask him for now. A moment of silence lingers between the two of you before he abruptly breaks it. You weren't out there for too long. Were you? Ah, uh, well, it felt like forever. You have no idea. Eh. Well, um. Uh, God, why do these two make me sound like so pissy? Uh, it felt like forever. Well, it felt like forever, but I guess it wasn't that bad. I'm just relieved you showed up when you did. He smiles and nods in response, his eyes glued to the outstretched road ahead. Gene, by the way. You turn to face him, head tilted in confusion. He takes notice of your lack of response and turns to look at you. My name, it's Gene. Your mouth opens briefly, forming a silent, Oh, I'm lying. And even in this game, I'm a bit of an idiot. Lion, that's a nice name. He shoots you a gentle smile before adjusting his eyes back on the road. He turn back to the open window, take in the view once more. The lull of the engine, paired with the heavy crashing of the ocean waves, began to take over your thoughts, making your eyelids grow heavier by the minute. Before you knew it, you were dead asleep. Exhaustion from the long day of driving mixed with stress finally took over. Your eyes struggled to blink open as the sun shyly peeked over the clouds. Its beams greeted you ever so lovingly, the warmth creating a gentle blanket over you. You lift yourself off of the car door, stretching the sleepiness away. Your eyes eventually find Jean, his hand having a firm grip on the wheel and head turned towards you. Morning there, sleephead. Awake just in time. His head gestures ahead of the car. Your gaze follows his cue to a small, old-fashioned building. The car comes to a rolling stop into the makeshift parking lot. Gene's deep voice pulls you out of your thoughts. This right here is Coral Inn, a hostel. You can stay here for the night. And don't worry about the pay. I've covered tonight for you. It's the least I could do, considering the day you've had. If you walk inside, just a little to your right should be the front desk. Just explain your situation and my buddy Dante will get you all set up. Uh, I'm staying here, thank you. Do you do this for all the people you pick off the street? So, do you do this for all the people you pick off the street, or am I special? 
Gene lets out a small laugh, his hand rising up to his mouth as he did so. Good question. I'd have to say you're pretty special. Don't go around spreading the word, though. I don't exactly have the money to be paying for every attractive person I come across. This one's between you and me. He shot you a quick wink that you would have missed if you had blinked. Alright, alright. You should get going now. It's starting to get late. Don't want to keep you up any longer. He turns away from you. Though you can see a shy smirk on his face with just a hint of red flushed to his ear. You can't help but smile to yourself as you gather your belongings from his back seat. Oh, Before I forget about your car, there's only one mechanic around here and his name is Kai. Take my number and I'll send you his address. You type his number into your contacts and give him your thanks. The two of you wave goodbye as you shut the door behind you. He pulls out the parking lot, leaving you to brave the hostel on your own. You stand the open for a moment, breathing in deeply. The earthy smell of nearby plants mingled with the damp industrial material of the building helps you get a hold of your new surroundings. Uh, well, eh, I grew up in a small town, never really been much of a city kid. Yeah, just like home. Sure, it wasn't exactly where you wanted to go, but it was close enough. The refreshing, clean air was reminiscent of your childhood town which was drastically different from the city you've been staying in for college. It was nice to be back in a quieter environment. A flock of birds chirp overhead, flying in formation towards the horizon. Watching them, you realize the sun was beginning to set, right past the small corner lot of shops. The sun's setting already. How long have we been driving? Glad I didn't choose to just walk to society. I probably would have been walking for days. You look down at your watch to plan your next course of events. Your body was practically begging you to crash in for the day. Also, you really should be getting your car sorted out first. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go to the mechanic. I mean, it's totally the evening. You think it over for a minute and decide it will be best to talk to Kai as soon as possible. I really should get this sorted out first. You lug your backpack over your shoulders and check your phone for the address. Following the directions on the text from Jean, you make your way to the workshop to meet Kai. As you approach closer, the sound of clanging tools paired by machinery fills your ears, the faint aroma of grease and oil growing more noticeable with each step. The large, car-filled buildings seem vacant, except for a figure bent over, peering into the hood of a car. Kai? You call out to no response. The hum of the car was overpowering your voice. Kai! You call out a little louder. The figure finally stood up and turned to face you. A large grin was plastered on his face as he rubbed dirt and grease off with his forearm, hands still clasping a wrench. Well, well, you must be new here. Hey, you did not need to whisper into my ear, Kai! Before you could open your mouth to reply, he quickly cuts you off with a broad grin. And trust me, I remember a face as attractive as yours. He winks a little and leans back against the door, grabbing a nearby cloth to clean his wrench and hands. To a day of the pleasure. His tone lingered, prompting you to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm lying. I was actually headed west until my car broke down near the forest. That's on me, I guess. I should have gotten my car checked out a good while ago. Look down to your shoes fidgeting them against each other. Luckily, Jean found me and brought me here so that you can help me fix my car. You look back up at him and smile awkwardly, feeling a bit embarrassed about the whole situation. He let out a short laugh and nodded before putting his wrench down. Well, that won't be too much of a problem. I'll head there with Jean later in the day. Also, I do have to warn you, it'd take a good while to fix it, especially if you're not from here. The spare parts here are pretty dated, and so are our cars, so it might take a while. Your worry must have been visible because he pushed himself off the car immediately, and defensively threw his hands up with open palms. <laughs> no, no, don't worry. You can trust me. My family's been working on cars since this town was founded. I promise to get it working as soon as humanly possible. He pats your shoulder lightly and gives you a warm smile. You can give me a number, and... 
I'll keep you updated on things. Uh, here's my number. Good luck with repairs. It better be as good as new. If you want my number, you're gonna just sit. So I'm gonna go for that. You smell to yourself at how frantic he got and nodded. Hey, if you wanted my number, you could have just said so. He blinks a few times and turns bright red. Well, I can tell you and I will get along just fine. So pure and confident, there's a slight quiver in his voice. Are you telling me this bad boy attitude is just a cover for how he's just a shy little meow meow? Oh god, I'm going to enjoy him so much. Cute. He grabs his phone out of his pocket and hands it over to you, the screen displaying a small prompt for your information. As you type in your number, you spot him peeking over to the side. His deep brown eyes scan all over your face, almost as if he were studying you down to your smallest features. You feel your face flush for a moment before handing it back to him. There you go. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Great. I'll send you a message when I get around to working on it. Hope you have a good time here. It gives you another wink before turning around to continue working on the car behind him. Alright, time to get myself some sleep. I'm beat. Your shoes crunch against the gravel as you make your way towards the entrance. The steps of the inn's wooden porch creak with each step, making you hurriedly take longer strides. As you open the door, you're greeted with surprisingly homely decor. The state of the building itself was just as decrepit as the exterior, if not worse, but someone was definitely doing their best to make it look good. Recalling Jean's direction, you take a few steps towards the right. A small wooden counter comes into view, a few monitors lined up on it. So only one seemed functional. You notice a man sitting behind one of them, the name tag on his shirt reading Dante. He didn't exactly look ecstatic to be there, but he also didn't look like he hated it. Uh, hey there, I'm lying. I think Jean might have mentioned me to you. You hold your breath, hoping Jean wasn't lying about paying for the night. Dante looks you up and down for a moment with a puzzled look before looking down at his phone. Oh, yeah, guess he did. All right, then. He sighs to himself before standing up. He's stunned for a quick second as he towers over you. He turns to grab a couple of papers from the shelf of files and books behind him. With a soft thump, a pile of papers fall in front of you. Okay, Lion. All you have to do is sign a few things and you should be good to go. You write down your information, occasionally glancing up towards him. He was back at his seat, tapping on the table with a pen and glaring right into your soul. Jeez, creepy. Elden! He slides over a small metal key with slight rust on its edges. Your room should be number 069. Don't make too much noise and no hot water past 9pm. Even for, yes, even for small amounts like tea. Okay, good night then. He ignores you and goes back to scrolling on his phone. Well, isn't he the most hospitable? You walk around the hostel. Mentally count each door and giggling to yourself over the childish number. Also, I know the developers are definitely watching this uh, playthrough, so I just want to say, uh, can we please make Dante a route? <laughs> is, that, is, is that a thing that you guys are planning? Like, can we please see Dante in all his glory and potentially try to woo him only to be turned down? <laughs> I am just saying, that would be incredibly funny. Uh, you eventually end up on the second floor finding a room right by the stairs. I'm just saying, there are some people out there who really like someone being mean to them, okay? Hint, hint, please. <sighs> okay, Jean, let's hope this room isn't that bad. Taking a sharp breath, you insert the key and turn, not expecting much of a view. Whoa. For being a rundown place, this... <laughs> this was a pretty nice room. Much better than you would have expected from the exterior lobby. Two large windows greeted you, luminescent moonlight shining through and illuminating the dark room. Despite being summer, the well-conditioned room made a cool breeze wash over your body. Not bad, Jean. Not bad. I guess it wouldn't hurt to lie and fire the room a little. Dropping your backpack and kicking off your shoes, you begin to set up the room to fit more of your liking. Oh, wow. Wait, why? Plushy? 
plushy. Yes. Well, what? Well, it's clock. I, I, I don't know if I can get the clock. But clock. Oh, uh, cat clock, cloud clock, fish clock, bear, bear. But nah, the the cat clock. The cat clock's good. All right. <sighs> Take a step back. You place your hands on your hips and let out a satisfied sigh to the newly decorated room. There we go. Much better. You change out of your clothes before falling onto the comfort of your bed. Also, why was I carrying my clock and plushies? I mean, plushies, I would understand. I mean, like, like sometimes you kind of just want, like, a little friend to come along with you. But why did I bring a clock? Your body melts into the mattress, and you quietly thank Jean for being generous enough to rent you a room. This beats the car any day. Thoughts about ways to repay him linger as you are soothed to sleep by the night's embrace. Sunday. Neat. Your eyes gently flutter open to the side of the hostel room, lightly glaze with the warm sunrise glow. You raise your body slowly and stretch, feeling much better than you did the day prior. Up you off the bed, you take small steps into the bathroom and get yourself ready for the day ahead. Thankfully, the hostel was kind enough to include toiletries and fresh towels. Ugh, much better. Taking one last look at yourself in the mirror, you gather your essentials and leave the room. As you step into the lobby, you are met with Dante's grouchy face. He sits behind the front desk with his legs up and a magazine in hand. Morning, Dante. He gives you a quick glance before placing his attention back to the magazine. Morning, Lion. Did you get a good night's rest? Despite asking, you could tell it's more of an automated response for good customer service than genuine curiosity. Ah, uh, baby Gronk into late. What does that mean? Um, uh, I did? Yeah, I did actually. Thanks for asking. I was wondering if there was anywhere nearby I might be able to grab a bite. Uh, I'm pretty hungry. Haven't really had anything but trail mix. There's a diner not too far from here. Just walk down the road and you'll run into it, I'm sure. He reaches under his desk and pulls out a pamphlet, holding it out for you. Thanks, man. Well, I'm here. Could I know how much it'll cost me for another night here? You reach your hands into your pocket for your wallet. About 70 bucks. No more, no less. You freeze. You want broke, but you definitely don't have enough money to pay 70 bucks a night. Plus, there was still the cost of whatever repairs needed to be done on your car. Uh, I'm not sure if I can afford that, actually. I might have to find somewhere else to crash. Dante sighs. Look, there's no other place you can stay. It's a small town, kid. It's either pay up or get comfy on the streets. You shuffle uncomfortably hearing this. You really don't like the idea of sleeping outside, but you seriously don't have enough money for another night. Dante clears his throat to get your attention. You didn't even realize you were completely zoned out. He gives you a pity sigh and looks up at you, putting his magazine down on the desk. I'm not sure if you'll be up for it, but I heard from word of mouth that the diner I mentioned was hiring. Could be a long shot, but it's the best chance you have right now. And since you're a friend of Jean's, I guess I can lower it to 50 bucks a night. You good with that? You tap your fingers impatiently on the counter. You aren't sure about getting a job in a town you don't, even, you don't even plan to stay in. Especially during a time that was supposed to be a vacation of sorts. So after weighing out your options, working for a while compared to being homeless in an unfamiliar place doesn't seem bad at all. Alright, alright. I'll keep that in mind when I grab a bite. Thanks again. He gives you a cordial nod before leaning back into his chair to continue reading his magazine. You walk around the town, a pamphlet in hand and a goal to fulfill. The diner. Where is the diner? As you scan your surroundings for the diner, you see a disheveled, red-haired man struggling with a heavy load of paint canisters in his arms. The script falters every so often, and the cans threaten to slip from his arms and crash onto the ground. Uh, I will help him out. Running over to him, you brace yourself against the heavy wood frame door and shove it open with your back. The scent of old parchment and pine immediately hits your face as soon as you open the door. It's comforting. Nostalgic, almost. The man gives you a quick thanks and rushes in, disappearing behind a curtain at the back of the store. 
Her eyes wander around the building who had entered and noticed the wooden shelves lining the walls, stacked with books. Some looked old and worn, while others looked new and untouched. You gently push the door shut and step into the store. A soft ding echoes, signaling your entrance. You feel the warmth of the sun fades as you move further inside. With your hand outstretched, you glide your fingers across the long row of books, feeling their distinct textures and designs. Looking up at one of the shelves, a familiar title catches your eye, and you make your way towards it. I haven't seen the series in forever. Wait, has there always been this many volumes? Trials of Tempest, the series that held so many fond memories of your childhood. Uh, you hated reading, but this was one exception. You loved reading, and this one, this was one of your favorites. You and your friends would read it occasionally. You liked to read it with your parents. Uh, well, uh, me and my friends would read it occasionally. You and your friends would meet up at your house on weekends and read stories together. A favorite amongst your little group would be Trials of Tempest. You discuss your favorite characters together and often have shipping wars or make predictions for the next installment. Eventually, the author stopped producing new volumes, so any hope of new stories was quickly dimmed out. Uh, you're quite tall, so grabbing the book wasn't an issue. Having average height, reaching for the book, re reaching for the book required a bit of stretching. Being on the shorter side, you struggle to reach the book. Uh, I guess I'm pretty average. You smile to yourself and reach up for the book. Your legs wobble a bit as your feet strain against the ground. A small ache going through your arms. Suddenly, a shadow looms over you, and you feel a large hand gently rest on your shoulder. The subtle pressure makes you lay your feet flat onto the floor, grounding you and releasing the tension in your body from stretching. You watch as another hand gently grabs the book before you could. Hi. Um, cutie, hi, how are you? You turn around and see the man from earlier, smiling softly at the book, brushing off any dust from its cover. A low chuckle escapes him, and he shifts his gaze towards you. <laughs> Trials of Tempest. I'm surprised anyone else knows about this book. And why is everyone in this... Why is everyone in this game cute? Why? This is not fair! I used to love the series as a kid. What about you? He holds the book out to you, letting you take hold of it. You take it, observing its cover. Yep. Definitely haven't read this volume yet. Uh, me too. I've never seen this one before. Stay silent. I'm sure most everyone's read it. Uh, you know what? The first one. Me too, but I've never seen this one before. This is a special copy, actually. I bet you thought it ended at Journey to the Storm God, right? You nodded. That was the last volume released before the author stated publicly that he was too old to continue the series. The author actually used to live in this town. He'd write out a few more stories and kept them in this very shop. He looked back down at the book. There were... more? And the author was from here? You certainly didn't expect that when your car broke down on some random road. Is he another love interest? Can I date the author? Hey. How about for helping me earlier? I'll lend you the books. Uh, you can take this one with you. Just come back for the next few volumes. Lend? He takes notice of your confused expression and chuckles again. I work here. Don't worry. I might look rough, but trust me, I'm not a fan of breaking and entering. And the story isn't that popular anyways. No one would notice if they weren't in stock. Plus, you knew, right? Dante mentioned we had a new face in town. We don't have much except for this one cool thing, so I want to give you something from our little corner of the world to remember. You smile and put the book in your backpack. Thanks. I'll take care of it. He takes notice of the pamphlet you had in hand. Oh, were you looking for Cup of Joe Mama? Uh, yeah, actually. Dante said it was just down the road, but I can't find it anywhere. Down the road? It's literally on the other side of town. In fact, any further from here, and you'd be at the beach. You pause for a moment and mentally facepalm yourself. Dante never specified which direction to go, and you had ended up going in the wrong way. <laughs> He stifles his laugh with his head and shakes his head. Classic Dante, man. He's a butthole. He can't help but laugh along. It was sort of comforting to hear that. It just meant Dante was rude to everyone and not just you. Truthfully, you were starting to feel like he had a personal vendetta against you. 
Uh, what were the paints for? So, may I ask what the paints were for? Oh. Just a little something I've been working on. It's nothing too big. His lips curled into a strained smile, the dimples in his cheeks becoming more noticeable. Alright. Are you friends with Dante? You seem to know him pretty well. Are you and Dante friends? Eh, uh, something like that. He knew my old boss, so I guess we're more acquaintances. He usually comes over for new magazines or just books for the hostel lobby. I see. I guess I should get going now. Any longer, my stomach might burst. Well, I'm gonna go to the diner before I miss out on breakfast. Thanks again for the book. No problem, uh... He pauses for a moment. Lion. Lion. No problem, Lion. Andrew, by the way. It's nice to meet you. He's so cute. Nice to meet you too, Andrew. I'll see you around. You give him a smile and wave goodbye as you leave the bookstore. So the diner is on the other side of town? God, kill me now! Following Andrew's advice, there it was. The words cup of dough mama plastered not only on the side above, but also hand-painted on the window. Your stomach grumbles the second you lay your eyes on it. This was your sign to make a break for it. You opened the door, immediately hit with the sweet smell of roasted coffee beans and greasy bacon. How cozy. You make a beeline to a booth, ringing the small steel bell on the table. You take a look around. The place is filled with families of all sizes, though you can only see one waiter. He seems to have his full attention on the cash register. His head perks up from the registry, and you watch as he grabs a small notebook, rushing over to you. Hi, uh, what can I get for you today? Why are you all cute? He's a bit quiet, but nonetheless, you understood him perfectly. This is a bad time to order. No, no. Definitely not a bad time. The other waiters are just on leave. Summer, you know. It gives you a toothy grin and you can't help but smile back. He suddenly raises an eyebrow, his eyes trailing your face. Are you new here? I don't think I've seen you around before. Uh, yeah, I am. My car broke down, so it'll be here until it gets fixed. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, no problem. My good friend Kai can get you all sorted out. I'm sure. You continue explaining your situation to him, not holding back on the little details. So much so, you had noticed he's now sitting in front of you. His eyes don't seem to leave yours, paying close attention to your words. A stark difference from Dante. It was pretty refreshing. Oh, sounds like a lot, but hey... What's your trip with an empty stomach, right? As if on cue, your stomach emits a loud rumble, which makes the both of you burst out laughing. Well then, what would you like to eat? On the house. I know you're low in cash right now. You know, considering the hostel and car costs. Are you sure? I don't mind using a few dollars. He shakes his head. His messy blonde waves bouncing as he does. Take it as a welcoming gift. You look down at the worn out menu laid before you. Well, if you insist. I'll get... Oh my god, that's a lot. Eggs, Benedict, uh, mushroom soup, pancakes, waffles. I will go for eggs, Benedict. Yeah. Why, 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 what, what, why, 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 what, I, well, wait, what, uh, bacon and eggs? What the... Grilled cheese sandwich! Wait! What? Would I... An omelette? Do you want anything inside your omelette? Ah... Oh, I know that everything! Give me cheese! A bacon! Onions! Mushrooms! A spinach! Bell peppers! Tomatoes! Turkey! That'll be all! Would you like anything else? I... I can I really order everything? Pancakes? Any topics to go over your pancakes? I will get, um, uh, butter, maple syrup, uh, whipped cream, caramel syrup, nut, bacon, peanut butter, fried chicken, some sausage, uh, strawberry syrup, fresh berries, fruits, now be all. Would you like anything else? Waffles, any toppings? God, um, 
fresh berries, butter, maple spare syrup, strawberry syrup, caramel syrup, whipped cream, fresh fruit, nut, peanut butter, bacon, sausages, fried chicken. Would you like anything else? Beans on toast, uh, mushroom soup, fruit salad, biscuits and gravy, hash browns, that'll be all. And that'll be all. He looks up from his notebook after jotting your order down. Flash you a confused smile. That's, uh, everything on our bed. Did I, did I make a mistake? I can't go back. I, I went through, I went through so many choices there. You nod. Are you sure? Yes. Why? You haven't had a proper meal in a while. He can't judge you. Well, uh, I'll come back in a bit of your order. Mix. You watch a man makes it, make his way towards the kitchen, where your eyes take notice of a Help Wanted poster messily plastered up on a notice board. It looks as if it has been up there for a while as the corners are torn and stained with a mysterious liquid. Dante's words echo through your mind as you're reminded of your lack of money. Right, job. I lost that waiter about it when he comes back. A few moments pass before you, you see him approaching your booth, carefully holding your food and gracefully maneuvering through the tables nearby with a signature smile. Here you go. Hope you enjoy your meal. Just call out to me if there's anything else you'd like. He gives you a small nod and turns to leave. Wait, I saw that this place is hiring. Are positions still open or am I too late? His head snaps towards you. His face painted with surprise and eyes gleaming with excitement. Uh, yes, yes. They're still open. Oh, man, we've been looking for some help for ages. I'm so happy that you're interested. His voice rises into a normal speaking volume as he lets his eagerness show. Taking a quick glance around the bustling diner, it's obvious to anyone that they were severely understaffed. You give him a big smile. You can tell he's going to be a great co-worker. That is, if you get hired. So, am I going to need to submit my resume to apply? Who should I even talk to? You peek past his figure to see if you can spot a manager run, uh, running around. His face fills your view as he moves his head to meet your searching eyes. His smile was unwavering. I think the person you're looking for is yours truly, Mix. Oh, and no worries about the resume. You're hired. I would at least like to know your name, though. You raise an eyebrow at him. You're happy to be employed, but you question the practices of the diner under this man's management. The fact that he just... He just paid for the whole menu for me. He, he, ju he just... He, he let me order the whole menu on the house. Why would you do that? <laughs> you notice he's fidgeting with his uniform as the two of you speak. You wonder how he even survived this long in this line of work, being th the quiet man he is. Right, my name. Uh, it's Lion. Okay, Lion. You can finish eating here and meet me in the back. I'll be happy to show you all you need to know. It's gonna take the whole day, my man. <laughs> Without another word, he starts to walk away before quickly turning his head to look at you again. Uh, by the way, my name's Chris. It was nice to meet you. Chris then continues to the register, where a small line of people are waiting to pay. It was nice to meet you too, Chris. He's already busy with another customer by the time you answer back. Once full and content, you make your way towards the staff door. Well, you can only assume it was the staff door. Chris flew out of it with a few dishes in hand a moment before. As you step through, you notice his head by a delicious mix of aromas created by all the different meals being prepared. Your smelling escapade is interrupted by Chris hastily busting through the swinging door, dirty plates stacked in his hands. He lets out a small gasp upon seeing you. Hey. Um, give me a second, please. You nod as he brushes past you, quickly placing the dishes in the water-filled metal sink. They hit the bottom of it with a muted clank. Chris grabs a cloth, drying his hands while he turns to you. He lets out an exhausted sigh. We'll start your training in just a moment. I just... I need this. His eyes tell you everything you need to know as he looks at you. He has probably been on his feet all day. He watches he lays back on the wall, sweeping away some of the sweat droplets on his forehead. His slightly disheveled hair frames his eyes as he gazes at the ceiling. 
His eyes suddenly meet yours, a shock running through your body. You quickly look away, embarrassed that he caught you. From the corner of your eye, you see him straighten up and sheepishly reach a hand behind his neck. A single thought then snaps you out of your embarrassment. Wait, did he say training? Hold on, we're starting training now? You sure this is the best time? Chris drops his hand and nods his head gently. We need help as soon as we can possibly get it. This summer has been one of our busiest, so I would love it if I could work with you right away. If that's okay for you, of course. His eyes wander away and his voice trails off into a faint whisper towards the end of the sentence. Uh, of course that's okay with me, I'd be glad to help you. I was hoping to explore the town a little more. I'll be glad to help you. Yeah, of course. That's alright with me. I'd be glad to help you out. I can't leave you in your time of need. You give him a reassuring smile and place your hands on your hips, excited to lend a hand to your newfound friend. Alright then, teach me your ways. Time seems to fly, with only a couple of minutes of your shift remaining. You paid careful attention to any upcoming orders. Now it's not the time to be making any mistakes, it could hinder your chance to leave early. You peer out the serving hatch towards Chris, preparing yourself to cook like your heart depends on it. Last couple of minutes, we can do this. The familiar bell of the door rings and you quickly fix your eyes towards the entrance. Instead of a small family or elderly person like you've seen all day, a young man walks in. He looks probably in his early 30s, his sleek, long blonde hair framed his face. His captivating eyes made it hard for you to look away. You feel like you've seen him somewhere, but you can't quite put your finger on it. All that to say, he didn't look the most approachable. He looked around with a slight skull, seemingly prepared to book it. Your eyes briefly meet, and you can almost swear he gave you a half smile before finding a booth to be seated in. He doesn't look like one of the townsfolk at all. Could he be another visitor? You turn to look at Chris, who seems to be just as puzzled as you are. He shrugs at you and clutches his small notepad, making his way over to the man. You aren't sure if it's because he's tired or not, but Chris says the usual upbeat manner for new customers looked diminished. Welcome to Cabajo Mama. What can I get for you today? Since you start working with Chris, you notice a pattern with him. At first, he'd stick with his usual script of asking someone what they wanted. But if the customer went off script and asked something he wasn't used to hearing, he'd falter. Can I get the... Omelette? This voice actor sounds familiar! But with just the egg whites. And lightly beaten, not whisked. Whisking makes my face bloat. I've got a shoot next week. I can't be bloated now, can I? Uh... Use pink Himalayan salts if possible. I don't want any preservatives in my system. Oh, and hold on any extra spices. I'm a simple man. Just salt, pepper, a hint of tarragon, and a pinch of cumin will do. Also, don't cook it the American way. Do it French. I prefer my food authentic. You are authentic, yes? The well-suited man nods his head towards the large window beside him. The words, authentic homemade recipes, plastered outside in large red font. I... yeah? Good. The man pulls out his wallet and pays for the food. Chris comes back with a small torn page, slowly pushing it over to you. Uh, sorry, Lion. I didn't get most of that. It's alright, Chris. I'm sure none of the things he mentioned are real anyway. He giggles and nods. Yeah, okay. Do your best anyway. With that, Chris leaves to clean a few empty tables from the customers that just left. How hard could it be? Crack a couple of eggs, separate the yolks from the whites, mix it lightly. You got it, Lion. You grab a bowl and confidently crack the first egg, successfully separating the yolk from the whites of ease. Oh my god, I'm basically Gordion Ramsley. Feeling optimistic, you move on to the second egg. However, this time, the yolk breaks and drips into the egg whites. Ah, uh, little yolk wouldn't hurt. You probably won't even notice. You start mixing, aiming for a light and fluffy look. Despite your efforts, however, the whites refuse to cooperate. I should just whisk at this point. You hold onto the whisk with a strong grip and mix vigorously, trying to salvage the situation. Instead of forming soft peaks, they remain stubbornly runny and lackluster. That's because there are no yolks in there, I think. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. Wow, 
This is not giving chibli. Whatever. Let's just cook this thing. You heat up a nonstick pan and pour the egg mixture into it. The consistency looking far from ideal. What do you want in it again? You only mentioned spices, right? Whatever. Regular salt and pep never hurts anyone. You sprinkle some grated cheese and chopped vegetables onto the layer of egg whites. Top it all off with salt and pepper. As you attempt to fold it, it tears easily. You manage to patch it up the best you can, but it's clear that this is not the Pinterest worthy egg white omelette you had envisioned. As you plate the omelette and hand it to Chris, you can't help but feel a mix of disappointment and embarrassment. Hopefully it tastes better than it looks. Chris, unaware of the small war you had with the man's oddly specific recipe, makes his way over to present it to the customer. What happened here? Chris tries to speak, but he cuts him off. No, actually, I know what happened. Your chef is terrible. Just look at this omelette. It's obvious they can't separate the yolks from the whites. It is most definitely whisk, not to mention that it's clear to anyone's eyes that it's under-seasoned. Under-seasoned? I threw everything in there! I'm deeply sorry, sir. It's actually their first day. Before Chris could even finish his sentence, the man puts a hand up and stands up from his seat. His figure towered over Chris, looming over him. Did you even try to get my order right? I bet you wrote it down wrong, because there is no way a chef could mess such a simple order up. Ah, uh, that was not a simple order, my dude. I could sue you for this. Do you even know who I am? Oh god, this could get messy. You swiftly exit the kitchen and rush over next to Chris, hoping to defuse the situation. Uh, well, I will immediately take the blame and offer to make another. Sir, this isn't his fault. It's mine. I was the one in the kitchen. The customer takes a moment to gloss over your figure. I could try and make another one if you like, properly this time. Ugh. He rolls his eyes and sits back down, pushing the plate back towards you and Chris. No need. You sigh quietly with relief as the tension eases up. You exchange a nervous glance with Chris, grateful that the situation didn't escalate further. The man leans back into the booth seat, still eyeing you with a playful smirk on his face. I'll most definitely be back another time, and you'll have a chance to redeem yourself. Despite his somewhat playful response, his tone still tinged with mild annoyance. You couldn't help but chuckle nervously. I promise, you won't be disappointed. Chris, trying to defuse any remaining tension, chimes in. Yeah, you know it. You know how it is with new recipes, right? Sometimes it takes a bit of practice to get them just right. Well, no. I don't know how it is with new recipes. I have enough to deal with day to day, so I have a personal chef. Oh. But I suppose you're right. I'm looking forward to that improved meal. Lion? You were about to ask him how I knew your name, but you realized your makeshift... Hi, my name is Sticker on your apron. <laughs> well, if you don't already know, I'm Wyatt. Here's my business card. I'll get going now. My appetite is ruined, and I have important matters to tend to. Till next time, Lion. Wyatt slides over his business card with a quick wink before getting back up and leaving the diner, making sure to nudge Chris on his way out. Pick up the card for information on the jerk. Wyatt Quinn. You CEO of Microsoft? Now it made sense. His eyes. Not only is he a genius, but he's extremely popular due to his pretty eyes. He's a hit in the modeling scene. You recall a couple of your friends fangirling over him, actually. Hey, Lion? Chris's gentle voice takes you out of your thoughts and you turn to look at him. You okay? Sorry about all that. We don't usually have customers like him. He looks down to the floor and plays of his sleeves awkwardly. You playfully flex your arms, make him smile a little. Well, besides that, your first shift is officially over. Here's the pay. He hands you a wad of cash from his pocket, his sad demeanor is seemingly disappearing into thin air. Uh, thank you. Are you heading off too as well? Chris gives you a strained chuckle and shakes his head. I wish. I still got the lunch and dinner service to look after. Plus, our other chef doesn't come in until around 7 p.m. Someone's gotta be here in the meantime. Has he always been working like this? 
it even legal for someone to be working this much? Not wanting to question more of his unhealthy work ethic. You simply nod and go into the locker room to gather your belongings. Ready to head off. Uh, hey. Um, uh, one sec before you go. My number. You should take it so I can talk to you about shifts or anything. Oh, right. You both exchange contact information and you leave the kitchen, waving goodbye to Chris as you leave. You look down at your phone as you exit, curious about the time. The number 1.30pm shone brightly on your screen. Huh. Still pretty early. I thought I was here for longer. I guess it wouldn't hurt to just walk around. Following the general direction of other townsfolk, you get to see more of what the town has to offer. Jean wasn't wrong. It really was a beautiful place. You find yourself in the town square. A fresh breeze blows through your hair as you take in your surroundings. The streets were crowded by people and had stalls lining them. Each stall proudly displayed their own unique produce and cuisines, with the most notable being fish. As you walk past the stalls to observe them one by one, you catch the sight of a familiar figure. Past this figure, you could see a shorter, silver-haired man who seemed to be talking with him. The man had his arms crossed, donning a tired look on his face. He isn't the kind of guy you would expect him to hang around. But then again, you don't necessarily know him well enough to be making the kind of assumption. Might as well go say hi. Grinning to yourself, you approach the duo and reach out to tap him on the shoulder. Gene turns towards you, his face lighting up as he realizes it's you. Lion! Didn't expect to see you here. Have you been settling in well? Yeah, I'm actually exploring a little right now. I even managed to get a job at Cup of Joe Mama. Cup of Joe Mama? Love the place. Great coffees to start the day with. I'll definitely be seeing you around a lot more. His eyes disappear from grinning widely at you. Your eyes briefly flutter to the silver-haired man. Upon noticing your gaze, the man sharply turns away. Sheen takes notice of your curiosity and takes a step back, placing his hand on the stranger's lower back to lightly push him closer to you. He looked at Jean with his eyes widened, startled by the sudden contact. Jean placed his arm around the stranger's shoulders, tightening his grip slightly as he spoke. This here is good old Vince Matador. Don't mind his behavior. He isn't used to new people. Vince's eyes narrowed as he gives Jean a cut glare before taking a glance at you. It was short-lived as he chose to give his attention to the ground beneath him instead. Um, yeah, I'll be nice. I'm lying. Nice to meet you, Vince. I'm lying. Vince says nothing in response, seemingly unwilling to introduce himself to you. Instead, he keeps his eyes downward with the occasional glance at Jean. Jean sighs deeply. Come on, Vince. We talked about this. Vince bites the bottom of his lip before looking up at you. Uh, hey. hey. Jean told me about you. Quite the predicament you've gotten yourself into. With the car and all. His voice is pretty quiet, so like Chris when he's nervous. Vince leans more to the mumbling side. Yeah, it's pretty unfortunate, but that's not to say good things haven't come from it. It's still a vacation, I guess. Mine is my new job, of course. Vince's attention wasn't on you by the time you finished your sentence and was fixated on the ground once again. Gene gently nudges Vince, jolting his attention back to you and the discussion at hand. After some short hesitation, Vince spoke back up. Well... That's an optimistic way to look at it. I'm glad you're not too bummed out about it. Vince's attention shifts back to Jean, who offers a nod in agreement. Silence fills the air for a moment before Jean clears his throat. Say, why don't you show a line around, Vince? It's about time I headed back anyway. Gotta get dinner started. Vince gives Jean a solemn look, his eyes practically begging for him not to leave. Jean, on the other hand, gives Vince a few gentle pats on the arm and a reassuring grin. All right, I'll leave you two to it then. See you around, lion. Bye, Jean. He waves goodbye as he turns his back to leave. Vince's face crunches up as he yells out for Jason. You're a little taken aback as he has been pretty quiet up until now. Hold on now. I never said I would. Jean, get back here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's pathetic! I love him! Jean ignores his pleas as he takes a final look back to wave goodbye before disappearing into the crowd of people. 
Vince's shoulders drop in defeat. He heaves a big sigh, turning his attention back to you. I, uh... I... Uh... <clears throat> I guess I could try to show you around. Unless you've already got plans. He looks down to his thumbs, which he has been twiddling awkwardly for the past few minutes. He doesn't look entirely convinced to walk you around. Um, well, refuse the offer for his sake, refuse the offer for your sake, agree to walk with Vince, reluctantly agree to walk with Vince. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I agree. I agree. He, he, I don't know if he likes it. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, sure. Why not? I don't have much else to do but sleep anyway. It's a better use of my time. Vince seems almost disappointed when you say yes. His shoulders drop as he exhales. Didn't he ask me? What's in the attitude? Uh, let's get on with it then. Vince's words sound half-hearted as they begin to wonder if this was the right decision as the both of you begin walking. It's hard for you at first to get used to the uncomfortable silence between you and Vince, but you eventually don't mind it. You've done more than enough talking today with the whole Wyatt situation, so the silence was more than welcome. Vince keeps his eyes glued to the ground, his hands fidgeting with the various bracelets on his arm. So, a voice trails off as you clear your throat nervously, struggling to find the right words. Um, I'll thank him for taking time out of his day. Yeah. Hey, Vince. You speak gently, trying once again to break the ice. I really appreciate you for taking time out of your day to show me around. I know it must suck to be forced to hang out with a stranger, but it's really nice of you. Vince's shoulders visibly relax as your words seem to have a positive effect on him. He looks at you and gives you a half smile. Nah, nah, it doesn't suck. I just don't really get out much. I'm not even sure what to show you, actually. Just show me your favorite places. Maybe it'll help me to get to know you a bit. He leads you to places like his favorite record store and a cozy coffee shop, his genuine enthusiasm evident as he talks about them. As the two of you make your way around a familiar corner, your attention is drawn to Andrew's bookstore. Through the windows, you catch a glimpse of him reorganizing books and engrossed in conversation with a few customers. Vince's eyes naturally follow your gaze, and his steps come to an immediate halt. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to another part of town. You turn to him and notice his eyes fix on Andrew, though his expression isn't a pleasant one. Um, yeah, I'll ask him about it, uh, yeah. What's wrong? I'd really prefer not to talk about it. He shifts his gaze downwards. He raises a hand to the back of his neck, absentmindedly scratching it to physically dispel his unease. Uh, drop it and go elsewhere, I don't want to push him. Acknowledging his apprehensiveness, you offer a reassuring nod. I probably shouldn't be prying. I can always ask him about it again when I get to know him better. Sure, let's go somewhere else. I haven't been around here yet. You motion towards the opposite direction and offer him a gentle smile. His demeanor softens, a flicker of relief crossing his face as the hint of a smile tugs at the corner of his lips. As both of you turn a corner, you suddenly hear the dis distant sound of music and applause. With your newfound curiosity getting the best of you, you follow the source and find yourself at a makeshift stage set up by what seems to be the town's local theater group. Approaching closer to the stage, the crowd's enthusiasm starts to excite you too. Taking a glance at all the performers, it was hard not to be drawn to the guy with bright green hair. You don't see that every day. Guess he really wants to stand out, huh? <sighs> You turn to Vince, who has his arms crossed and brows furrowed. What's wrong? I'm just... not a big fan of crowds. Or him. You focus your attention back towards the stage, where the green-haired man was giving his final monologue. He happens to be one of the lead actors, his energy and charisma undeniable, his presence radiating through the crowd, mesmerizing everyone with each spoken word. Him? If by him you mean the walking highlighter, then yeah, him. You start a little at the comment, caught off guard by Vince's unexpected sense of humor. 
As the performance reaches its conclusion, the crowd ruptures into cheers. Your attention gets pulled back to the lead performer. So his eyes were already on you, his gaze direct and sparkling with intrigue. As the crowd slowly disperses, he boldly jumps off the stage and approaches you with a wide grin. You hear a small groan of protest come from Vince as he rolls his eyes. Hey there! You new in town? Name's Kevin! Do people in this town just know everyone? This is like the millionth time I've been asked this. Yeah, actually. I'm lying. How could you tell I was new? He snorts sheepishly. I'm a regular performer here. Practically every week. I've seen the same faces countless times, but yours... Yours is definitely new. He gives you a playful smug, his eyes holding a glint of amusement. Before you could reply, the man's gaze falls on Vince and his eyebrows rise, as if he just realized he was there. His smirk only strengthened. Oh? The vampire finally left his house! <laughs> Proud of you, Pri. I really thought some sunlight would make you dissolve or something. Vince only musters up an annoyed glare. Satisfied with his teeth, the performer returns his attention to you. Anyways, are you finding Brian Bay? I'm sure it's not much, but it's got a few redeemable charms. Eh, let's see, uh, I like it so far. Well, I like it so far. It's quaint, a nice difference from the city, and everyone here is cute. His eyes widen with surprise, and he excitedly grabs your hand. City? You're from the city? That's so cool! Only for college. I grew up in a pretty small town, similar to this one, actually. But it's nice to get back into a more familiar environment. You chuckle awkwardly at the sudden contact, and he quickly lets go. He clears his throat as his cheeks flush a light red. Um, sorry. I've always wanted to go to the city. He let out a soft, amused laugh. No worries, I understand. Well, so, uh, what did you think about my performance? Is it anything like the actors from Paragon Arts? Paragon Arts? Probably the most prominent theater company you could think of. It comes as no surprise that he aspires to be like them. Uh, well, I'm appraise him. Oh, definitely. I personally think you're better than some of those carbon copies I've seen. Did you see how riled up the audience was when you finished your scene? Never seen anyone do that! You've got something special there! Excited, he grins and lifts his chin triumphantly. Your response makes Vince roll his eyes and turns to look elsewhere, now uninterested in the conversation. Thanks! <laughs> you would say that! I hear it from the others all the time, but it's refreshing to hear it from someone new. I mean, come on! Look at me! He puffs his chest out and does the small flex of his arm. I've got the charm, the talent, and the extra it factor. I really think I can't get far. Just not here. He chuckles slightly, his bravado momentarily fading as he relaxes his posture. Not here. He seems well established, though. It's a small town, you know. Can't get my name out there if it's unknown. Right, right. But hey, I'm getting closer every day. Maybe someday you can even call yourself one of my first few fans. He gives you a quick wink. A voice suddenly calls to him from the stage where people have started to clean. Ah! Damn! I gotta bounce, but... He begins rummaging through his back, pulling out a small business card that looks similar to Wyatt's. Feel free to reach out if you ever need a friend, or want to catch another show. He begins to make his way back to the stage before turning his head to you to raise a hand to wave goodbye. I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. And with that, he disappears into the crowd. You look up at the sky and notice that it's starting to get dark. Clearly, you've stayed out longer than you would have liked to. It's getting pretty late. We should get going. Vince nods and follows behind your lead. While walking home, you glance down at the small makeshift card in your hand. Kevin Zuno. Recalling Wyatt's card, you, you retrieve it from your pocket and compare the two. Yep, exactly the same. Isn't this kind of plagiarism? Shrugging out the thought, you tuck the two cards away. So, what was that all about? What? Me and Kevin? Eh, uh, don't worry about it. It's kind of dumb. 
He waves his head up dismissively as he mumbles under his breath to downplay the situation. If you say so. It was nice seeing you be less gloomy, though. You give him a small nudge and a smile as he dips his head to hide the flush on his cheeks. The both of you finally reach the hostel after a long walk back to the opposite side of town. You are just about spent on energy and were in need of a good night's rest. Well, I guess that's it for today. Yeah, thanks for walking me back, Vince. It's no problem. As you're about to turn, he gently reaches out, his fingers brush against yours. Her eyes flicker for a brief moment down to your hands before making eye contact with him. Um, thanks for today, Lion. I know I'm not the easiest of people to get along with, but you kept trying anyway. Not a lot of people would, so thank you for that. I, I had a good time. Me too. Me too, Vince. It's been nice to meet you. Would you, uh... His voice trails off. Crack it a little at the end. Would you maybe... No. Um, like to have my number? He averts his gaze and begins to nervously chew on his lips again. Uh, unless you think that's stupid, which it kinda is. Why would you want my number? We just met. That's, that's weird. You chuckle at his nervousness and nod. Sure, Vince. His expression relaxes slightly, a hint of relief tugging at the corner of his lips. He takes out his phone and quickly shares his number with you. It's a small gesture, but you can tell it means more to him than he's letting on. Well, I'll head off now. Jean would probably start freaking out if I'm not back before nighttime. Right. Jean did mention he was making dinner for them. Good night, Lion. Good night, Vince. You smile at him as he walks off. Glad he was able to come out of his shell by the end of the day. Upon entering your room, you waste no time, shutting your clothes off by the entrance. A trail gets left behind you as you rush into the bathroom for a well-deserved shower. You do your usual night routine and get into your comfiest set of pajamas. As you leave the bathroom, you gather your discarded clothing to clean when you get the chance. Hopefully there's a dry cleaner nearby. You hop into the bed and wrap yourself up with a large blue comforter. Turning to your side, you grab your phone and begin scrolling through your list of new contacts. I wonder if anyone's free to talk with right now. Oh! I get to pick. Uh, oh, I, I can't- I can't talk to mom and dad! Why? Uh, I, I should be able to at least tell them what's going on. Uh, I wanna talk with Kai. Chris is so cute. Kai, why can I save? I'm gonna save. Uh, let's go with Kai. Huh, neat. Hey, yo. Hello? I was wondering when you'd finally call. Uh, what are you up to? How's the progress with my car? What are you up to? Just about to make myself some dinner. Actually, I just got your car into the workshop. Oh, that's good. Yeah, me and Jean were able to give it a look and bring it into town. I gotta say, I've never seen a model like that before. Real beaut, but seems I was right. It's gonna take a while to fix. Maybe two weeks, tops? Hey, on the bright side, I get to keep seeing your cute face. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Plus, I'd say the town is pretty nice. Think of it as a free vacation. Well, I don't want to keep you for long. I'm sure you need some sleep too, right? So I'll hang up for now, okay? Don't miss me too much. Good night. Night, Kai. I... I think I had chills. As the two of you exchange your parting words, you press the end call button. Well, this wasn't exactly what I thought my holiday would be like, but I'm glad everyone I've met has been nice so far. Feeling content, you plug your phone into the charger and gently shut your eyes, ready to doze off to sleep, but not before calling everyone else. All right, I hope the sheriff doesn't mind I'm gonna bother him in the middle of the night. Ugh, come on, sheriff. What you got for me? Ugh. Sheriff! Come on! Uh, is everything all right? Everything's fine. Just wanted to talk. <sighs> okay, 
Good. Um, I'm actually glad you called. I wanted to ask how everything went with Vince. Eh, I think it went well. Really? Oh, man. That's great news. Can I ask why you wanted us to hang out together so badly? <clears throat> uh, I'm just worried he isn't getting out enough, you know? I mean, the guy barely has any friends other than me. Ah, uh, I see. I haven't seen him hang out with anyone else. I mean, the only person I've seen him speak with is Wyatt, but that's once in a blue moon. You seem pretty passionate about... Hell, I thought if maybe I pushed him a smidge, he'd break out of his shell, but... Gene! Oh, sorry, I got a bit carried away. This is just really important to me. I get it, Gene. You're doing a wonderful thing, taking care of him like this. But remember, you just have to remember Vince as his own person at the end of the day. Huh. You're a smart one, you know that? Thanks for keeping me in check. It's the least I can do for everything you've done for me since I got here. <laughs> Don't even worry about that. It was my pleasure. Uh, Gene? Hell, I didn't check the time. Uh, I think I'll get out of your hair now. It's getting pretty late. You have yourself a great night. I'm glad you made it back safely. See you. Night, Gene. As the two of you exchange your potting words, you press the end call button, and we start calling someone else. You know, I wonder how awkward it would be if my boss suddenly got a call from me in the middle of the night. I wonder how Chris is going to react to this. God, I can't, I can't get over how cute he is. Jesus. <sighs> Chris! Hi. It's so good to hear from you. I actually just got home. A longer shift than usual today. <sighs> but enough about me. How are you? Are you feeling better about the situation with Wyatt earlier? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Did you say you just got home? Isn't it super late? Struggling? I'm struggling to sleep, to be honest. Doing fine. <laughs> yeah. Oops. The funny thing is, I still gotta cook for my sisters after I take a quick shower. Ah, <sighs> times like these, I wish I did a little bit more exercise in high school, cause I am spent. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> well, I should get to it then. Thanks for calling. I don't think I've had anyone just call and talk to me in ages. Who aren't my sisters, of course. Good night. Good night, Chris. And now we gotta call someone else. Uh, I don't know how to feel about Wyatt, but I'm gonna call him either way. Okay, seriously, what am I doing calling the CEO of, like, some tech company <sighs> with pretty eyes? Hello? Who in the hell is this? Do you even know how late it is? I'm supposed to get my full nine hours of sleep. God, I can see that you're trying to pull a full Astari in there, but hello! That voice... Are you that chef from Cup of Joe Mama? Just so you know, I don't give my number out for late night calls unless I know I'll be having a good time. Hey, yo! Whatever you called for better be important. Ah, uh, I just wanted to apologize again for earlier today. As you should. Honestly, I'm not sure how this town doesn't have finer dining establishments. It's got great views. Even an open, oceanside, greasy fish shop would be better than Cup of Joe Mama. <laughs> what kind of name is that? Uh, yeah, I guess I get what you mean. <sighs> it's a good thing you're cute. I'd normally sue for mistakes like these, but... That face of yours saved that sad excuse of a diner. Well, I hope this wasn't enough chatter for you. However, I desperately need my beauty sleep. Good night. I'm just gonna say, like as much of a butthole he is, I am trying so hard not to squeal right now. Good night, Wyatt. Good night. <laughs> Call for a good time, he says. Oh, Lord. Okay, okay, how funny would it be to call Vince in the middle of the night? I mean, like, he didn't just give me his number, but is he just gonna fumble the bag the whole night? Oh my god, I, I need to know, I need to know. Vince, pick up your phone! Vince! Come on! Vince! Uh, hello? Who is this? It's... 
It's me. Oh, it's it's you. Hey. Is everything all right? Yeah, I just... I, uh, wasn't expecting you to call me already. Uh, did you get home safe? No, no. I'm still making my way back. I, uh, wanted to take a little detour. Walk around town a little longer. I'm glad we had this walk. It's been a while since I've gotten some fresh air, so it was nice getting to show you around. Ah, uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to. I should be the one thanking you. I don't know a lot of people, so going out like this was a little out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but, you know, kinda knew Gene would give me a huge lecture if I didn't. He's just looking out for me. I guess. Ah, oh, I think I'll hang up for now. Again, thank you for today. Rest well. Ah, you too, Vince. Also, like, I just gotta say, I think, like, a nightly stroll with Vince it would be, like, incredibly beautiful to see. Like, holy frick, he is just... He is just so adorable, Frank. Well, we still got one more guy to call before we turn it for the night. I wonder what Kevin's up to. Uh, well, he did give us his number as well. Everyone in this town that we met so far has given us their number. Except for Dante. He knows where we live. Kevin! Aspiring Broadway actor and great improviser. May I ask, uh, who's calling? Um... Is this how you, like, is this how you answer every call? It's me, the person from the park. Oh, what's up? Not much, but you do that for every call? Yep, never know who's calling. Could be a Paragon agent, or even a movie deal. Ah, uh, fair enough. I knew you'd understand. <sighs> Can't you see it? Me in NYC, my face on the billboard? Different city every night. Trust me, I'm one phone call away from being the next Lin Manfred Miguela. <laughs> Lin Manfred Miguela? You mean Lin Manuel Miranda? Yeah, the guy who made Jefferson. Made in the Lows too. Ah, uh, you sure do know a lot about this Lin guy. <laughs> He's every theater kid's idol. <sighs> <sighs> Well, I should go now. Got a big production in the works. Need to be prepared. I got the news that since Wyatt's here, a bunch of big city folk are coming for his press talk next week or whatever. Who knows? Maybe a Paragon agent will be there? Night night! Don't let the vocal cord monster bite! Good night, Kevin. Gotta say, he is incredibly cute. But I think it's about time we turn in for the night. Feeling content. You plug your phone into the charger and gently shut your eyes, ready to doze off to sleep. I wonder how tomorrow will go. Anyway, that was Threads of You Beyond the Bay. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. So, I feel like this is a dating sim that we should definitely be excited for. Like, I love all the characters. I love the writing of it. It's just solid all around. My only critique of it would be like, um, the GUI for whatever you are on a phone call. It could be a little better, but otherwise, all around, this is solid, and I can't wait for the full game to be released. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.